welcome to this sacral chakra work because it's going to be so good. Oh my gosh, so good. You're going to love it, I promise. Um, the inspiration for these classes is from a class that I'm taking, which is called The Path to Radical Self-Mastery with a teacher named Anand Marotra. And um, so I'm going to be bringing yoga in and some of the things from his lectures and just to blend it up. And it's going to be awesome. <laughs> Sibelia says, be gentle. <laughs> I will be, I promise. Sharia Lee, nice to see you. Nice to see you. All right. So let's come to the head of our mats. I'm re-angling my camera. This is being recorded just to let you know. I've got a YouTube channel since so many of you said that you wanted um, to have a recording of, um, of class. So this is being recorded so that if you like are here today, but you miss maybe, um, you know, day two, three, four, five, you can watch it on the YouTube channel. So let's inhale those arms out and up, reach up. We're just going to start this class with an easy flow. Remember, for Swadhisthana Chakra, the element is water. Color is orange. Come on down. Soften those knees as much as you need to. Inhale, arch up halfway. Flat back. Exhale, release down. And step that right leg back. Nice long line, hands frame the foot, shoulders are down the back, pour energy down that leg. And then ground the hands and step it back, down dog. Walk your dog out, settling one heel down and then the other. Head hangs heavy. The seed sound for Swadhisthana Chakra is WAM. Wom. Glide forward plank pose. Breathing here. Allowing heat to build in the belly, feeling your strength. And then come on down, Ashtang Pranam. Glide up, Bhujangasana. Really, elbows hug the waist. Beautiful, bright, open heart. And then curl the toes, lift the hips. Down dog. Settle the heels down. Tailbone rises up. Head hands heavy. And then let's step that right foot forward. Knee is over ankle. Hands frame the foot. Another breath, pouring energy down that left heel. And then step that left foot forward, coming into your forward fold, Uttanasana. Soften those knees, head hangs down. Inhale, arch up halfway, flat back. And exhale, release. Continuing to just drop down into this body. Inhale the arms out and up, reach up. Hands together, down to the heart. And snuggle the base of the thumbs into the heart space. Soften those knees. Standing here in your mountain, Tadasana. Closing the eyes. And go inside. Swadhisthana Chakra, it's our seat of creativity. It's our seat of abundance. It's our seat of sensuality and sexuality. Breathing here, another breath. And then drop those arms down, reach them up, lift up. And exhale, dive forward, just flow. The element is water. 
Inhale, arch up halfway, flat back. Exhale, release. Step that right leg back. Hands frame the foot and drop the knee down. Allow the hips to release. Getting into those hips. So, we have, just as with Muladhara Chakra, if you remember, Muladhara Chakra, our first chakra, was the seat of infinite possibility, infinite potential, right? And then we had the, you know, the shadow side of Muladhara Chakra as well. And just as with that, we have Swadhisthana Chakra, where, you know, the, um, the seat of creativity and abundance and um, sensuality. And our shadow side for Swadhisthana Chakra is our sense of victimhood. Set those hips back to stay down on the left. So it's our conditioning. Trauma lives in Swadhisthana Chakra. Guilt, shame, all of these things live in the sacral chakra. All right? That's the shadow side of our second chakra. And that's what we're going to be working with. Sit those hips back again, toes rise and because, you know, just as we talked about with um, Muladhara Chakra and this sense of fear, that's the shadow side of Muladhara Chakra. Sorry that I didn't say it. It's fear. Inhale forward. You know, when we are in this place where we continue to feel isolated, feel that we're just this, you know, individual self captured in this physical body, of course we feel fear. Exhale back, touch, rise up, fold over the leg, breathe into the back of that left leg. And inhale forward, curl the right toes under, right hand comes down, left arm reaches up. Feeling yourself just starting to move like water. So maybe with any pose, even, you know, if I don't prompt it, if you feel like, you know, I just kind of feel like, kind of like you know, moving the, the body, moving the arm in a way that's kind of flowy, floaty, go for it. Hand comes down, ground the hands, step it back, down dog. So with everything, with everything we do here, the first step is self-awareness. Glide forward, plank pose. You all know how many times I talk about um, Swadhyaya, right? Self-inquiry, self-study. So the first step here in our exploration of Swadhisthana Chakra is getting a sense, come on down, knees, chest, chin, ashram, pranam. Inhale up, bhujangasana, elbows hug the waist, beautiful back bend, shoulders are down, breathing into the belly. And come on up onto the knees this time, anahatasana, so the palms press, heart melts down. Maybe the forehead touches down and maybe it doesn't. Curl the toes under, breathing into the underarms. And then plug those hands in, lift the hips, settle the heels down, head hangs heavy. So with this self-inquiry, the question for us here is, you know, 
what conditioning have I received over the course of my life? You know, what have been the building blocks of my persona? Step that right foot forward. Hands frame the foot. Breathing here, pouring energy down that left leg. So it was actually in class, one of my students mentioned that persona in Latin means mask. The mask we wear, our persona. Drop that knee down, low arms Allowing the hips to release down, relax down. And the persona that we wear, and we've talked quite a bit about persona, the persona that we assume is so often, you know, the way we've been validated, right? Set those hips back, folding over that leg. So it's often what we've been validated as, you know, how we get attention, good or bad, right? Who we've been told we are. Exhale it back. Very often it's, you know, how we've um, earned love from the people in our lives. So that's my question for you for this class, is just to explore your persona. Because our conditioning, inhale forward, our conditioning, you know, can very often wind up being a straitjacket. You know, we're, we're afraid to step away from the way that we're seen Exhale it back towards rise up. And often this conditioning can also wind up being part of a victim mentality. Or there are expectations that get layered into our lives. Left hand comes down. Curl the back toes under if you'd like and bring that right arm up. And again, you can kind of flow here. Bringing that arm around, bringing movement into the shoulder, having that feel good. Just kind of a watery movement. So I shared with y'all, gosh, it was a month or two ago, about how when I was driving home from Florida, I wound up going into um, Burger King with Cooper, my 10-year-old. And then bring that hand down and step that right foot forward. Plug the hands into the mat, settle the heels down, tailbone rises up, head hangs heavy. And while we were waiting, Cooper was getting an ice cream or something, I don't remember exactly what. He's, he's big on... Uh, on strawberry shakes. This woman um, was standing next to us with her daughter and she had job furs on and you know riding boots. Glide forward plank pose, breathing here in your plank, feeling heat build. So she had job furs on, riding boots, this beautiful crisp white blouse, her hair was in French braids, a white um, jacket which said something about some sort of a yacht club, um, beautifully put together. And I looked at her and I said, there's her persona, right? You know, um, you know, an equestrian who goes to the yacht club. Come on down. Ashton Pranam. And then I laughed. Inhale, come on up. Because I looked down at myself. And there I am with my yoga pants and my Trust the Universe t-shirt and my flip-flops. There's my persona, right? There's my persona. 
Bring those hips back. Palms press. Anahatasana. And very, you know, this is the way that we show up in the world because we're effectively sending out to the world, this is who I am. And then we layer these expectations, you know, onto this is how I should be treated, this is how I should be perceived. Lift up, settle the heels down, down dog, head hangs heavy. And again, the persona kind of constricts us. It limits us. And that's another part of the shadow side of Swadhisthana is self-limitation. We take our stories, we take our conditioning, we take our shame, we take our trauma, and we limit ourselves. Right? Breathe in here. Another breath. And then flip that right leg back and up. Stretch it up. Reach it up. And step it forward. Coming into our warrior one. So just have those arms reach back and then float up. Remember, this is water. Jala, Jala Mudra, is when we take our thumb and our pinky fingers together. The other three fingers um, um, reach out, stretch out. So let's flow with our jala mudra. We're inhaling up. And then we're exhaling down. Inhale left. And exhale down. And I jokingly um, told you all another story about me where I was cleaning the house, I was, I was mopping or something, and I was chewing gum because it's part of the book Breath by James Nestor. Quite a few of us read that book. Um, he mentioned the benefits of working the jaw to open up the airways of the throat to increase your breathing. So come off onto our right foot, Karate Kid. Hands are still in Jala Mudra. And then flow that leg back, Virabhadrasana three. Good focus, gaze. And then float back up, Bakasana, Karate Kid. Hands in Jala Mudra. And then step it back, Virabhadrasana one. And hands come down. Plugging the hands into the earth, walk your feet out. So, I was um, mopping the house, chewing gum, and I was like, gosh, this feels so weird. Why does this feel so weird? It feels weird to be chewing gum. Float that left leg back and up, reach it up, lift it up. Roll the foot on the ankle if that feels good, and step it forward. And what I realized, Set the foot, and remember we're going to flow, so take your Jala Mudra if you'd like. Pinky, tip of the pinky to the tip of the thumb. Other three fingers, reach out, and then we float up. And then we waterfall down. So, I said to myself, well, you know, I think of myself, this is my persona, right? I think of myself as an intellectual. <laughs> and I'm just not a gum chewer, right? The silly things we say to ourselves, you know? So in my, you know, mind, being an intellectual didn't mean that I could be a gum chewer, right? It's, a, it's an example of how our persona can limit ourselves, which is obviously tremendously silly that chewing gum has anything to do with being an intellectual, but that's the way that, you know, when you're not mindful, you can, again, have your persona wind up being a straitjacket. So thinking about your persona Think about it. 
and step off onto that left foot. Coming up into your Bakasana. Just a little bit of a flow. Coming up and down. And then floating that leg out into your Vera. Three, good balance, good focus gaze. One side might be harder than the other. This one's definitely harder for me. And then come back up, Bakasana. And step it back, Vira three. And then hands come down. So when you have these kinds of things, you know, when I, when you're able to tease it apart that, you know, you say to yourself mindfully of, oh, you know, I'm, I'm an intellectual, therefore I shouldn't chew gum. You're able to just shine the light on the silliness of that kind of a thought pattern so that you can free yourself, free yourself from that kind of conditioning. Breathing here. So closing your eyes and going inside again. Let's touch the knees down, widen the knees, touch the toes. Come down into your child's pose. Touching the, um, the fingers again in Jala Mudra. Thumb, tip of the thumb to tip of the pinky finger. Other three fingers stretch out straight. Mudra of water. Breathing here. And with the forehead lightly touching down onto the mat or possibly a block if you need a little bit more height. Close the eyes, roll the eyes up and in. And ask yourself about what is the persona? How have I been conditioned to act? Because that's really at the heart of yoga. Yoga means to yuk, yuj, y-u-j, yuj, is to yoke in Sanskrit. It's the unity of mind and body. In the eight limbs of yoga, the final limb is samadhi. And samadhi is about going inside going through all the koshas of the body so that you are connected with Atman or Jiva, which is our true self. Letting go of our conditioning, letting go of our persona, letting go of the limiting thoughts. Plug the hands in, curl the toes, lift the hips. Head and exhale, tailbone rises up. Hmm. And then let's step our right foot forward and turn our feet. So that we're in a wide-legged forward fold. So with a wide-legged forward fold, our heels are wider than our toes. Fingertips come on down and let the head hang heavy. Breathing into those hips, allowing the tailbone to rise up as the head water falls down. And then walk those hands out. Heel toe the feet together. Heels come in, toes come out as you lift up, and we'll do our warrior breath. So with warrior breath, this is really to get our energy flowing. So we're going to do a double inhale and then a double exhale, okay? So we're going to inhale, cross the arms, bring the elbows back, and then we're going to inhale the arms up. And then we're going to exhale the elbows down, making fists of the hands. And then exhale the arms out. So it's inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. 
Inhale through the nose, inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth, exhale through the mouth. Exhale through the mouth, exhale through the mouth. Sorry, I did that wrong one. Exhale, exhale. Straighten and let's bring our arms together. And we're going to bring take, take again the fists, okay, the thumbs on the inside, thumb representing the ego, and we're going to exhale the arms out. And again, it's it's going to be soften those knees, come on down into a squat. So we're going to inhale, inhale, and then exhale, exhale. And you want there to be like an isometric pressure against, like as if you're resisting the, the movement at the same time. So it's inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale, inhale, palms face each other. Fists, palms. Inhale, inhale, exhale, exhale. <sighs> inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. <sighs> Feeling the heat building in the legs as if I needed to tell you that already. Last one. Straighten those legs, widen the heels, widen the feet so it's about a leg length between the two legs. And again, come on down. Breathing here into your sweaty stomach chakra. Hmm. Turn to face the head of your mat. Step it back. Down dog. Alright. Alright. Roll the head on the neck. And let's step our leg forward into Kaputasana. So in our pigeon, so we kind of like scooch the left knee back to help ground the hips down. And then we have a beautiful back bend, fingers tented as we're arching the spine. And your choice if you want to just keep chilling here or if you want to bring that foot up. If you want to bring the foot up, you can push your left hand on a block. That makes it easier for you. And then you reach back and catch the back leg, the, um, the left ankle with the right hand. Breathe in here. It is Laura. Do I look different? Another breath. And then release that grip and come on down into your classic pigeon. Now, if classic pigeon does not suit your knee, come on to pigeon on your back. For the rest of you, stay in classic on the belly. For the rest of us, let's come on to the back, the right ankle onto the left knee and bring the knees in. Breathing into that hip. And keep asking yourself, I'm coming back into classic, keep asking yourself, you know, what is, has my conditioning told me about who I should be? So often this conditioning is about how we earn love how we earn acceptance, how we validate our worth. 
that's why conditioning is so incredibly sticky. So close the eyes, roll the eyes up and in. And just ask this question. And as I always say to you, if you don't wind up with an answer, that's totally fine. Now, I am definitely in that camp. When someone asks me a question like this, I kind of get the deer in the headlights and I'm frozen and I'm like, oh my gosh, what does that mean? And then your brain starts like chittering around, like, what does that mean? Does that mean that, you know, other people are more in tune with their, with their inner self than I am? And you just start, you're off to the races. Don't go there. It's all good. It's all good. Another breath. And then walk those hands up. Beautiful. Back bend. Breathing. Shoulders are down the back. And then plug those hands in, curl the toes under, and come on back. And swing that leg out. Swing the right leg out, bringing movement into that hip. That's why yoga is so incredibly good for us on a physiological standpoint, because it gets the flow of synovial fluid into our joints. So now it's the left leg, which is out to the side, and we kind of lever that knee down. I, the way that I do it is I kind of scooch the knee back until the hip is like lower to the ground. And then you tent the fingers and you breathe into your back bend. Beautiful squeeze for the kidneys and the adrenals roaring in those out. They live just above the belt line at the back of the body. Sending them love. So many of us have adrenal fatigue. Another breath. And either chill here, if this is good enough for you, or you can take your quad stretch where you bring the heel in. Right hand comes down. Put the right hand on a block if that suits you. And then catch that ankle and breathe here. Hmm, right? Foot is flexed. Breathing, breathing, and then release, and come on down, come on down. Hmm. You think I look different? Oh, I don't know. Fast effect, I don't know. That's an interesting question. I have no idea. So breathing into that left hip. And again, closing the eyes, rolling the eyes up and in, in Sambhavi Mudra, which stimulates the pineal gland. And asking yourself again, you know, what is the conditioning? How have I consistently been prompted to earn people's love, to earn my sense of belonging, to earn my sense of self-worth. How have I been conditioned? And just asking the question is enough. If you don't get a quick answer, that's totally okay. Remember, this yoga is much deeper than asana. Asana is our physical practice. This yoga is a yoga that will take off the mat with us. So asking the question, planting the seed, so you can continue to think about it is totally okay.
another girl. And then walk those hands up. And swing yourself onto that left hip and swing the leg around. And you can take Sukhasana, which is an easy seat, or you can sit on a block if you'd like to sit on a block. And I invite you to bring your thumbs together and the, the index fingers together as if you're making a triangle. And we're going to lay the triangle right on the Swadhisthana Chakra. This is your Swadhisthana Chakra. So if, you're, if your thumbs are kind of meeting right at the belly button and then the, the fingertips go down, okay? So here we're going to chant our Bija mantra, which again is WAM. It's spelled with a V, a V-A-M, but it's pronounced WAM. And I invite you, let's before we do this, let's, let's rub our hands. So really bring some warmth into the palms. And then feel, see if by floating the hands apart, if you can feel as if you're holding a ball of energy. And if you don't feel that, kind of flick your wrists and rub your hands again. And you might, like for me, I can feel the ball pretty much right about there. My, my hands are pretty sensitive, so I've been doing this for a long time. You might need to bring your hands in. You know, you might need to bring them pretty close. And it's like, it's almost like it's a repulsion. It's almost like your hands are, you know, polar. I guess it would be the same, right? To um, like the same magnets, like you're being forced, your hands are being forced apart. So feel that energy coming off the hands. And then again, hands come to Swadhisthana Chakra. The thumbs together, fingers touch as if you have a downward pointing triangle right here at the sacral chakra. Breathing. Mm. And let's inhale and we're going to long together. So, and as you inhale, I want you to really connect with these hands. And as you exhale, I'd love for you to think of these hands shining a beautiful healing light into the pelvis, into the, the pelvic bowl, remembering that the shadow side of Swadhisthana is trauma shame, guilt. Some of our conditioning could absolutely have been us expressing our natural selves and being told, that's not okay. Boys don't act that way. Or girls need to be sweet. They need to be quiet. So we're healing ourselves here. We're bringing awareness to this conditioning and we're healing the trauma, letting go of the guilt, letting go of the shame. So the inhale, light shines into our palms.
Jala Mudra, thumbs touching the pinky, and just breathe here. Breathe into the color orange, breathe into the pelvic bowl, breathe into your creativity, your sensuality, your sexuality, your abundance, feeling yourself. Just beginning to bring awareness to the persona and just gently starting to shrug it off. Shrug it off. Another breath. And coming off your block, if you were sitting on a block like I was. And coming on to the back body, hugging the knees into the chest. Rock it out. Rolling feet on the ankles, rolling the head, the head on the neck. Soles of the feet on the floor and windshield wipe with the knees back and forth. Inhale the knees up. Exhale, other direction. Just twisting it out, letting go. Inhale, and exhale. And if there's one last pose that would feel really lovely before you go into your Shavasana. Feel free to do that now. And your choice, if you take traditional um, Shavasana arms with the arms alongside the body, palms up, or if you want to leave your hands on the pelvic bowl, palms down, shining love, shining acceptance, Shining compassion, shining kindness into our Swadhisthana Chakra. Allowing yourself to heal. Just gently let everything go as you melt down into this moment. Today's poem is by Dana, and the title of it is Lay the Armor Down. Dana writes, Arriving back from the fields of battle, bruised and bolder, we are beholden to no one now. Losing or winning, the reasons for the war fade quickly in the memory. We've forgotten that these suits of armor are not our second skins. Smiling, we set aside the shields and swords, remove the face masks, begin to peel away the layers of weight and protection. When finally we cast our armor to the ground, it feels as if our bodies grow and straighten, swell and lengthen upward toward the sun. 
we run light and unencumbered and stretch the stiffness from our joints. Rolling on the grass, we laugh as awkward limbs remember freedom. When at last we return to where we started, without a second glance, we know that we've outgrown the suits of armor. We won't fit inside those two tight shells again. Why would we even try? Breathing here in our Shavasana, knowing that this work that we'll be doing in Swadhisthana Chakra is all about laying down our armor. Laying down our armor so that we can expand more fully into our truth. So as you're ready, bringing movement back into the body, wiggling fingers and toes, rolling the hands on the wrists, rolling the head on the neck, the feet on the ankles, rolling over onto the right side, cradling the heart, wrapping your arms around yourself, Sending yourself so much gratitude, so much love for taking care of you by dedicating this time to this practice. And then carefully pressing yourself up into an easy seat. Hands come together at the heart space and Anjali Mudra. Let's take a nice big inhale and we'll long out together. Wow. Uh... 